All right, Barakah Thai Yahweh, Barakah Thai Yahweh Shah, Barakah Thai Yahweh, Barakah Thai Yahweh Shah. Call Hello Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. Double honesty, apostles of the Great Millstone, and salutation to you brothers that's watching this, that's uh, doing the work in sincerity and in truth. All right, I'm doing a video today. Um, by the way, I'm, I watch Shamar from the DC camp, and I'm doing a video of um, I'm gonna talk about Esau's history, cause these Edom, these Edomites, they were in slavery once before, you know. And, and they're going back to slavery. And you know, I'm going to bring out, um, I'm going to start with this scripture right here. Um, this basic milk scripture that we, we bring out, you know, when we're in reference to these Edomites. But these Edomites can say, hey, in regards to us, you know, um, we, we led into captivity, we shall go into captivity. But guess what? These Edomites are the, uh, the children that, um, well, your father Esau sold his birthright, <laughs> you know, so therefore the scripture doesn't apply to you, you know, but I'm going to bring in the history, I'm going to bring out the history of you, you so-called white people, you Edomites, you went into slavery, not only um, in the scriptures back during the time of King David, you know, but you were, you went into uh, slavery during the time of the Dark Ages, under the Arabs and the, um, the Moors, okay, and I'm going to bring out that history. Um, so let me start off with um, this, this, uh, this right here. This is Obadiah. I mean, no, this is Revelation 13 and 9. It says, If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Now, who are the saints? The saints of the Israelites. So this scripture, in, in regards to the book of Revelation... Yahweh Shah was re revealing this word through John unto the saints. That he that leadeth in the captivity must go into captivity. Because right now in these times we're in, we're in captivity under the Edomites, the so-called white men. But let's go to the book of um, let's go to the book of Obadiah real quick. And this is the prophecy of Edom. So you so-called white people or have a whole book of condemnation to uh, a, a whole book of condemnation, you know. For, for yourself, man. It came in the form of Obadiah. Obadiah got the vision from the Heavenly Father, okay? Now, I want to read this real quick in the book of Obadiah. Um, this is um, this is Obadiah 1 verse 10. It says, For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee. And who is Jacob? Jacob is the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. So it says, for thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. In the day that thou studdest on the other side, in the day that thou, that the strangers carried away captive, captive his forces, and foreigners entered into thy gates, and cast lots upon Jerusalem, even thou was as one as them, that, Shalaki, even thou was as one of them. Going back to the time of the, the ancient Babylonians, when they came into Jerusalem, and they, they besieged Jerusalem, um, they took over Jerusalem. You was as the Babylonians, you Edomites, talking about your so-called white people. You know, it said, thou was like one of them. And it says, um, but thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother in the day that he became a stranger, neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the, over the children of Judah in the day of, the, in the day of their destruction. Neither should thou have spoken proudly in the day of distrust. So you, you Edomites, back during the time where we got taken down by the Babylonians, you rejoiced at our fall, and you shouldn't have did that. Now let's go into, uh, uh, I'm gonna go into First Ezra 4, verse 45. This is First Ezra 4, verse 45, real quick. And it says, um, it says, uh, Thou also has vowed to build up the temple which the Edomites burned when Judea was made desolate by the Chaldees. Going back to uh, this, this precept that I just read in o Obadiah. Okay? We had to build up the temple because you Edomites, you burnt it when the Chaldees took us down, which were the Babylonians. Okay? And it says, um, It says, And now, O Lord, the king... This is that which I require and which I desire of thee. No, but I just wanted to bring that out real quick. 
That's that's it basically. Proving that you Edomites, you know, you burn you you the Edomites burn when Judea was uh, desolate. You Edomites burnt the temple, man. Okay. You 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 burnt the temple, man. All right, you gonna pay for that. But in the history, you paid for it too, man. You you went into slavery, man. Now, mind you, you're, you're a people that come from the Caucasus Mountains. Um, you come from the caves, man. You come from Mount Seir. All right? So let me go to, uh, this is the book of Job 30. Here, here where your you're, uh, not, so, uh, not so beautiful beginnings, okay? Now, this is uh, the book of Job 30, verse 1. It says, but now they that are younger than I have me in derision, whose fathers I would have disdained to have set with the dogs of my flock. Yea, where too might the strength of their hands profit me, in whom old age was perished? For one in famine they were solitary, flying into the wilderness, flying into the wilderness in former time desolate and waste. So you were a low people, man, at one time. Now they parade uh, around and they, they, they're in top positions. Their politicians look at their head, uh, Edomite in charge, Donald Trump. Now these are proud people, man, but you come from the caves, man. You come from the caves and there's a, 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 a warrant out for your destruction, man. You know, that's about to be served by Yahweh Bashim Yahushab. Yahweh Shab, man. Okay? It says, who cut up mallows by the bushes and juniper roots for their meat. They were driven forth from among men. They cried after them as after a thief to dwell in the clefts of the valley, in the caves of the earth, and in the rocks. So you dwell in the clefts of the valley, in the caves of the earth. Okay, Amalek, uh, uh, um, Amalek, Amalawak, or Amalak, um, you so-called Jews, the, your name is Dweller in a Valley. That's where you get your name from, Amalek, Dweller in a Valley, okay? All right, all right, so, you know, you had very low beginnings, okay? And um, we're going to read, we're going to go into this, uh, this, 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 uh, it's, it's an absurd excerpt from a book written by Robert C. Davis. It said, Christian slaves, Muslim masters, white slavery in the Mediterranean, the Barbary Coast, and Italy, 1500 to 1800s. So between the 1500s and the 1800s, you Edomites, you were in slavery. And this is not a history that, um, that, that you like to bring out, you know? And, but, but what's about to come upon you Edomites it's going to be worse than this. And this was pretty bad, okay? So like I said, it's a book from, um, uh, it was by Robert C. Uh, Davis. It says, the untold story of white slavery. Whites have forgotten what blacks take pains to remember. Reviewed by Thomas Jackson. Okay, and I had this for a while. In the Barbary Coast was the area of the Mediterranean Sea. You know, uh, Modern day Libya, Tripoli, Tripoli uh, um, Alge Algeria, or Algiers, Tunisia, Morocco, that area in the Mediterranean, and all throughout uh, Southern Europe, Southern France, Spain, Italy, you know, you, you used to have the Ottoman Empire, which is modern day, uh, you know, areas of Greece and Turkey, they used to call it the Ottoman Empire, okay? So we're gonna read some of this ex excerpt, um, and I'm bring out some precepts of how King David and King Amaziah, when they had these Edomites, these so-called white people in slavery, okay? Now, um, it says, as Robert Davis notes in this eye-opening eye -opening account of Barbary Coast slavery, American historians have studied every aspect of enslavement of Africans by whites, but have largely ignored enslavements of whites in North Africa. So, they, um... They call these uh, uh, slaves so-called Christian, you know, but we know that they were Edomites, man, okay? And, and, and the so-called slave masters were uh, so-called Muslims or Arabs in, 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 in a, a mixture of, uh, uh, you had uh, Jake, the, uh, the Moors, that's where you get the book um, uh, Nature Knows No Color Lines, you know, because you had Moors, they used to, and, and it goes into it in, in this article how they used to, put the, uh, uh, the Edomite men in slavery on the galleys and they used to take the white women and pop them, you know? 
Okay, and that's what we're going to do when we get the kingdom of Yahweh Bashim Yahusha. We're going to take the good, the choice looking women of the Edomites, the so called white women, and we're going to pop them and we're going, to, we're going to take the men and we're going to put them to hard labor, man. You know? Okay? Now it says, um, it's this is now this is carefully researched, all right? Carefully researched, um, written account of Professor Davis called The Other Slavery which flourished during approximately the same period as the transatlantic slave trade and which devastated hundreds of Europe, European coastal communities. Slavery plays nothing like the central role in the thinking of today's whites that it does for blacks. Now, this is a perspective of an Edomite. Um, you know, this is from the perspective of an Edomite, but we want to take some points out of here and, 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 and go into it. Um, it says, uh, it goes into a subheading called the wholesale business. The Barbary coast, which extends from Morocco through modern Libya, was home to a thriving man-catching industry from about 1500 to the 1800s. The great slaving capitals were Saleh in Morocco, T uh, Tunis, Algiers, and Tripoli, and for most of the period, European na uh, navies were too weak to put up more than token resistance. And this is before Esau really started coming into power, man. Because remember, the Renaissance started in like uh, uh, the late 1400s into the 1500s, okay? And then the last, uh, the last, um, uh, what is it called? The last uh, strongholds of, uh, uh, of the Moors, uh, what? I, I can't give you the direct. I think it was like the 14 or 1500s. Their last strongholds were being pulled down. Okay, it says the trans transatlantic slave trade in blacks was strictly commercial, but for Arabs, memories of the Crusades and fury over expulsion from Spain, yeah, because the Moors were ex uh, ex uh, expelled from Spain. It says in, in 1492 seems to have fueled an almost jihad-like Christian stealing campaign. So they refer to themselves as the Christians, you know, or pagan Christian. What Esau follows after pagan Christianity, which was created by uh, our people, the Israelites, okay? It says, it may have been that this spurred of vengeance as, as opposed to the bland workings of the marketplace that made the Islamic slavers so much more aggressive and initially successful in their work than their Christian counterparts. Now this is this is the perspective from Prof, uh, Professor Davis. It says during the 16th and 17th century, more slaves were taken south across the Mediterranean than west across the Atlantic. Who you know? It says some were ransomed back to their families. Some were put to hard labor in North Africa, and the unluckiest worked themselves to death as galley slaves. Now, galley slaves were, you know, when you watch those ancient movies, though, uh, the galley slaves were the slaves that rode the paddles, you know, that, that, that used the rolls on those galleys when, um, you know, you might have went to war or, you know, traveling. And that was, uh, that was very rigorous work, and a lot of them would be worked to death, you know, rowing, you know, rowing across the sea, you know. It says what is most striking about barbarian slave slave um, slaving raids is their scale and reach. Pirates took most of their slaves slaves from ships, but they also organized huge amphibious assaults that practically depopulated parts of the of the Italian coast. Italy was the most popular target, partly because Sicily is only 125 miles from Tunis, but also because it did not have strong central rulers who could resist invasion. And that's why when you hear the brothers on the streets talking about, um, you know, a lot of the Sicilians were Israelites because a lot of those uh, slave raids took place in um, uh, Sicily and Italy. And, you know, the Moors and some of those Israelites that, that, that looked like Arabs were popping some of those women, man. Okay? And it says, um, large raiding parties might be essentially unopposed. When pirates sacked Visti in southern Italy in 1554, for example, 
They took an astounding 6,000 captives. Algerians took 7,000 slaves in the Bay of Naples in 1544. In a raid that drove the price of slaves so low, it was said you could swap a let's 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 swap out the word Christian for Edomite, that you could swap a Edomite for an onion. So you Edomites that dwelt up there in Europe in, in parts of Italy, you were sold for the price of an onion, man. Meaning you were sold for cheap. You know, it says uh Spain too suffered large scale attacks. After a raid on Grenada in 1566 and added 4,000 men, women, and children, it was said to be raining, raining Edomites in Algiers. For every large scale, you know, I'm, like I said, I'm swapping out the word Christian for Edomites. It says, um, in Algiers, for every large scale raid of this kind, there would have been dozens of smaller ones. Okay, so it was... Raids in Spain, in Italy, you know, all over the place, okay? Um, let's uh, read down. Now I'm skipping down. It says, uh, Barbary, Barbary Pirate Galley. And this is the second paragraph. It says, Pirates returned time and time again to pillage the same territories. In addition to a far larger number of smaller, smaller raids, the Calabrian coast suffered the following increasingly large-scale de de uh, de uh, depred depredation in less than a 10-year period. 700 captured in a single raid in 1638, um, 1636, 1,000 in 1639, and 4,000 in 1644. During the 16th and 17th centuries, pirates set up a semi permanent base on the island of Aishia and Procida practically within the month of the Bay of Naples from which they took their pick of commercial traffic. So it was a lot of Edomites being picked up, you know. It was a lot of Edomites uh, being, being picked up, okay. Um... This is getting into the raid party. Now let's let's uh, look. Uh, here's another paragraph. It says constant pre, uh, predation took a terrible toll. Women were easier to catch than men, and coastal areas could quickly lose their entire childbearing population. Fishermen were afraid to go out, or would sail only in convoys. Eventually, Italians gave up much of their coast, as Professor Davis explains. By the end of the 17th century, the Italian peninsula had by then been prey to the barbarian corsairs for two centuries or more, and its coastal populations had largely withdrawn into walled hilltop villages or the larger towns like Rimina, abandoning miles of once populous shoreline to vagabonds and freebooters. <laughs> So these Edomites, they were scared, man. You were scared of the Arabs. You were scared of uh, uh, the Moors. You know? What's the word Moor? It just simply means black. And then these were uh, Israelites that practiced, uh, practiced uh, 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 the, um, the religion of Islam. Okay? Uh, let's see. Um, it says, life under the lash. Land attacks could be hugely successful, but they were riskier than taking prize, prizes at sea. Ships were therefore the primary source of white slaves. Unlike their victims, Corsair vessels had two means of popu populism, populism, galley slaves as well as sails. This meant they could roll up to any become, become sailing ship and attack at will. They carried many different flags, so when they were under sail, they could run up whatever ensign was most likely to guard a target. A good-sized merchant man might yield 20 or so sailors healthy enough to last a few years in the galleys. And passengers were usually good for a ransom. Noblemen and rich merchants were attractive prizes, as were Jews. <laughs> as were Jews, <laughs> who, could, who could usually scrape up a substantial ransom from co-religious religionists, high clerics were also valuable because the Vatican 
will simply pay any price to keep